inspired by poetry. Let's give it some lip. Ta-da. Well, welcome back to another fun-filled episode of Life Inspired by Poetry uh, with me, Jenna, and with TB. Hello, TB. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I, I, I haven't been, uh, we haven't been together in a while, and my soul is starving. Yes. Well, <laughs> so. I think that what we have today will be quite satiating. Um, we're looking at a couple poets who really were standouts of their time, but not necessarily received they were received differently. Yes. And we'll talk about maybe why that could be. And we'll look at their poetry, though. And, of course, we'll talk about both form and function. And we'll talk about the content and how each of them were looking both at their individual experience but also the collective. Yeah. Because both of our poets are African Americans who um, are descendants of slaves yeah. and one a little bit closer to the time than the other, and each of them are looking at that time period and thinking, how do we move forward now? Yeah. What's our next step? And and I, I want us to look at it also in the context of, like, our what we think of in terms of wokeness or enlightenment, right? Mm -hmm. Is they're both enlightened in different ways. Yeah. And it's how they saw the source of power empowerment. Exactly. So, and the approaches that you, they would took very two different approaches right. to looking at these issues when we talk about civil rights and their history right. and how they brought it to the modern form in a way that we can engage meaningful uh, and meaningfully and, and, and to think about, yeah, how we got here, but this is yeah. this is here. This is what here looks like. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Now, Langston Hughes, one of the first ones we're going to talk about, he was prevalent during the 1920s, which is when the uh, Harlem Renaissance is what they call it, yeah. was happening. And that was a time where um, black intellect, literacy, enlightenment, and artistry yeah. was really celebrated. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, We'll see with Langston that some of his work was criticized by, like, James Baldwin yep. and especially di uh, dismissed by, unfortunately, uh, the white poets. Yeah. Um, but his has lasted. Yeah. So the legacy of it. So there obviously is something there that speaks to not just that time period, but also the human condition that can transcend yeah. the time period in which it was written. Yeah. And, and with Langston, I think that there was a bit of undertone of anger mm. at times that people thought that may not have been where enlightenment should take us. Yes. But understanding that the the two ways that was visible coming out of, you know, talking about the emergence of that Harlem Rena Renaissance and where do we go from here, mm. it could be the track of a Malcolm X philosophy or a Martin Luther King, and we see and, that kind yeah, of divide you can see that, that divide, and and you can see that in the voices. You can hear that mm. in the voices here. Is that for some it was a power that you have to claim it, yep. you've got to own it, yeah. and in the other it was like, yeah, let me learn the game, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think that was the difference. That was the 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 divergence between the two voices. Yes. Um, but still, both was a source of enlightenment, and mm. they were the intellects of the time. And both Langston Hughes and Maya Angelou, in my opinion, are about celebrating, reclaiming, and, um, you know, just sitting in yeah. who you are yeah. and where you've come from. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing. Yeah. And that's not something that, in, in, and not slavery, where yeah. you've come from, but I mean beyond yeah, that. Yeah, beyond that. That, that. that being enslaved was a condition. Yeah. It's not an actual identity. Yeah. And so each of them were trying to break break that, break the chains, yeah. right? Not not just physically, but now those kind of generational and emotional yeah. chains that have come with it. And they were voices that said, let's not think about that. Let's think about what we have to offer. Yeah. And there's a difference here in terms of being a slave and being enslaved, exactly. right? Um, so one is tied to who you are. The other is a condition, right? right? That you, it doesn't always have to be there. 
my definition of empowerment is that it can't be given to you. It has to be something you own and claim. And I will tell you that ties very much back to my engagement with Langston Hughes in that you've got to own it. Mm. No one gives it to you. Power isn't something that is seceded and suddenly people share it, yeah. right? You've got to know your source of power. And uh, I don't see it as threatening. I see no. it as a very enlightening way exactly. to look at who we're empowerment. Yeah. You have the power now own it. That's right. So love Agreed. the voice. Well, let's get into his okay. poetry here. Uh, we're going to do the first one called The Negro Speaks of Rivers or I've Known Rivers is also how it's um, referred to. And this one's interesting because it's been um, sung. It's been made into yeah. music. Uh, Robeson, I don't know if you've heard Robeson with a real G Yeah, voice. with a G. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he does a version of this. Yeah. And so uh, anybody listening, if you want to Google it, it's really, it's really quite uh, stunning. So this is how Langston Hughes put together this poem. I've known rivers. I've known rivers ancient as the world and older than the flow of human blood in human veins. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. I bathed in the Euphrates when dawns were young. I built my hut near the Congo and it lulled me to sleep. I looked upon the Nile and raised the pyramids above it. I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans and I've seen its muddy bosom to turn all golden in the sunset. I've known rivers, ancient dusky rivers. My soul has grown deep like the rivers. Wow. Mm. <laughs> wow. Mm. I don't understand what's not to love about this, right? What's not to love about it? Because it's as natural as everything in our environment. And think about the rivers, the flow of the rivers, the the for me, the tranquility and the lulling of it. And to compare one's soul to be that old, mm. right? Yeah. And purposeful. Yeah. And purposeful. And what I love in Langston is his ability to draw out these historical references in mm. such subtle ways that makes you want to know more. Yeah. Like, you know, makes you really want to know more. The association with these historical these historical references, it's about life is didn't start here. Yeah. My soul didn't emerge just from this. It's been around. It's old. That's right. It's wise. Go back. Go back. Yeah. So if you can't find it in this state, understand where it comes from and mm. go back to its source. Yes, yes. And, and the naming of the rivers, you're, you're right. You're, That's a yeah. subtle historical yeah. reference yeah. to different moments of African history. History. Yeah. And uh, when I would read Langston, he would always give me, I, I call them teasers. It's a teaser. What do I need to know about that? Mm. So even though it's a very... It's very brief in its form. It has the depth of a book. It does. You know, and I, I think of his writing as being so deep and so meaningful. And there's so, I'm always left wanting more. Mm. And I go back over and over to those historical references and go, what am I missing? What do I need to know? How can I use this? And he was brilliant in doing that. Yep. I, I, I could never understand why he wasn't as accepted as he should be. Yeah. Or, you know, honored for his contribution. Only after death. Yeah, only after death. Yeah. And I love illusions like that, symbolic illusions that you're right. When you go back and you actually look at it, you see the depth of meaning yeah. that comes out and just pours out yeah. of this poem once you understand these references yeah. and what they are referring to. And my one of my favorite lines is, I have known rivers ancient dusky rivers yes. it doesn't have to be clear no. <laughs> it doesn't have to be perfect mm. that's right right not crystal it doesn't have to be crystal, crystal. yeah so but but in that i've known rivers mm. i've known all parts of it yeah i'm engaging with this this i understand this right yeah. and you see his kind of feeling about you know, because if he's writing the 1920s, yeah, it was 1860 that we had the Civil War, yeah. you know, and so we've had about 50 years. Yeah. Well, we got a few years of like crazy yeah. after things happen. About 50 years of not being of enslavement, not being the norm. The, yeah, the thing of right? the day. Yeah. The thing of the day. <laughs> and so, and, and then you have this 
Renaissance where there is this celebration yeah. and this reclamation. Yeah. And so this line where he says, I heard the singing of the Mississippi when Abe Lincoln went down to New Orleans. So we have those yeah. two references there. And I've seen its muddy bosom turn all golden in the sunset. Yeah. Right? And I guess what I like about that is because it, it shows a closure. Yeah. The sunset is the close of the day. Yeah. It's a closure of that of that uh, period of, of slavery being accepted yeah. as okay. Yeah. And his idea is now, so let's not hold on to that. Yeah. Let's think about all of our rich history, yeah. what we have to offer. Yeah. I have known these rivers, and my soul holds all of those rivers yeah. in one. I love it. I, I, do. I really do. And, uh, you know, when it comes to the the muddy bosom turns, all go, you can see it can be something else, right? right? You can hold on to that, or it can be something it's else. It's so philosophical. Yeah, it is. It's it like, is. do you want to hold on to the bitterness of that, of that moment it of is. history? Or do you want to understand the breadth of it? And, and if I think of it in today's discourse, it is all about... Wokeism isn't about all of the things you need to do. It's it's the essence of who we are, yeah. right? That's right. <laughs> He's going, these things have been around before we were here, right? right? So if we can look at them as these references to, yeah, it'll continue. Mm. How do we want to continue? So there's a lot of depth. And like you say, he's, he was a philosopher, May. Mm. Agreed. He was a philosopher. Yeah. He was asking the big questions of the day. And philosophers are often shunned. <laughs> they are. They are. They make <laughs> us uncomfortable. That's right. It's like, it's what? very uncomfortable. How dare you? Or, yeah. the, or they're un not understood. Yeah. Or, yeah, all kinds yeah. of things. Yeah. So, you know, looking at, at what he has here about this kind of reclamation, about this celebration, about understanding moments in time as not the full picture. Yeah. I think that's so important for us today because Absolutely. I feel as though sometimes we try to raise yeah. zombie-like yeah. the past yeah. as though it's still impacting. Yeah. And it can. There are there well, we are forget threads, it. But let's talk yeah. about the thread, not the... Yeah. 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 What else? So so we're not... It's about big picture, right? Exactly. So if you look at the ecosystem around us and, and how all these things are happening... This is not the beginning. This is yet a chapter in the book, exactly. right? It's like not that. the beginning. It's I a like chapter that. in the book. Yeah. And so we have to understand the whole story. And the story means that it's been here for a long time. We've been here for a long time. I'm associating myself with all the things that were here prior to this moment in time. Mm -hmm. So you can't identify me or limit me to that little thing that you've just created mm -hmm. or that period of enslavement i'm bigger than that my hut was in the congo yeah i bathe in the euphrates yeah. you know so you if can't you think of the the the, the, the nile right. you know if you look at those references and all iconic references mm. right mm. very few people wouldn't know about these things That's and right. if you don't you should go back and look at these things that you're just not going to pin me down to this moment that's right and and i think that's what made people uncomfortable mm because there was a show of strength way beyond the current discourse. It was going, let's take it out of this and take it to another place. And I think that might have made people uncomfortable. Yeah. Maybe it was too soon. It was too soon. He was ahead of his he time. He was ahead of his time. There but we go. Way, we way go. ahead of his time. And, and I have to say that my life is inspired by not only the function of this poem, but it speaks to me in ways that are unimaginable, yeah. you know? It, 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 you know, if, if you ever want a place to figure out and grow your self-esteem, read his works. Yes. Because if you don't get a sense of self out of it, you need to read again. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's right. You That's need to right. read again because it digs deep mm -hmm. and it forces you to say, you know, it's not just this. I am not this. Enslavement does not identify That's me. Right. It doesn't make it anything other than this moment in and time. it didn't create no. me. Correct. I was creating I was before. far beyond. Yes. Before. I'm before bigger than that. that. Exactly. I'm bigger than that. Exactly. And the pyramids, a reference to the pyramids, yes. and its ability to be around for a long time, right? Correct. And the, yeah. Pyramids still stand. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That longevity. Yeah. It still stands. So if you, right. you know, his, you know, his association with all the sustainable things that we talk about, mm -hmm. it's like, 
think of the system in which all of these things happen, and I know that I'm, I'm at the very beginning of this. It's so good because we get so focused on the microcosm of things yeah. and we don't understand the implications to the wider, more holistic. Yeah. Yes. I love it. So I love loved it. it. I touch my, it touches my soul every time. It touches <laughs> my right. soul. That's right. It touches my soul. And then if we move a little bit uh, into actual the civil rights time. Yeah. So now we've moved from the first 50 years to the next, next. kind of 30 yeah. years yeah. after that. Um, we get Maya, yes. who's again looking at Harlem, yes, and is is using that that moment to raise and show us some other type of resilience. Yeah, mm, absolutely. So. And I have to disclose, Maya is my hero. <laughs> okay, I don't blame um, you. She's my hero throughout my entire life. Yeah, I, I was introduced to um, Maya Angelou when I was a little girl. And I've grown up on her. I hang off every word. <laughs> so she is my hero. Yeah. And she's my hero because of the way that she uses her voice. Yeah. And I'll share with you. And then we can, on the other side, we can talk a bit more about it. Sure. So Harlem Hopscotch. One foot down, then hop. It's hot. Good things for the one that's got. Another jump. Now to the left. Everybody for himself. In the air. Now both feet down. Since you black. Don't stick around. Food is gone. Rent is due. Curse and cry and then jump too. All the people out of work. Hold for three, then twist and jerk. Cross the line. They count you out. That's what hopping's all about. Both feet flat. The game is done. They think I lost. I know. I think I won. Yeah. Power, power, power. Power, power, power. Power, power, power. The game, the system. Yes. So I think the lens in which she looked at, and Harlem, for for those who don't know, was sort of the epicenter Mm -hmm. for um, not only the black black African-American, you know, renaissance, but that was like, that became our home, right? Mm -hmm. The reference point of, when you think of the South, the South was where the atrocities happened. New York. Harlem. Harlem. Yeah. Is what we own. That's the land we claim. So if you think of, we set up our little Israel there, yeah. right? And that was home. So all the things of black culture, was that was a home for it. So it's often referenced. And mm-hmm. I, I think it's great to have a place. It's like we, this is the land we own. I often think that that's the treaty was formed. <laughs> and, yeah. and this is what we claimed. Um, and her way of looking at it through the lens of a child Mm. Right. Mm. For me, it was great. And uh, for those of you who don't know, you have never played hopscotch, it's often associated with poverty because nothing is required but chalk and ground. Right. Yeah. And not even chalk. You can draw. You can draw it, it in the dirt. In the dirt. Yeah. If you don't if you don't have a pavement. But I was thinking in the context of, of Harlem. Right. Yeah, yeah. In Harlem, it's pavement. concrete jungle. Yes, right. Concrete so. Jungle. So. If you, you know, but you're right. It's, mm. it's, it's so the nuances of poverty and the socioeconomic strife mm. of that is, is just a choice of games. Yeah. Like speaks to the heart of that, right? Mm. Yeah. If you had money, you played Monopoly. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if you wanted money, you played Monopoly. <laughs> but this is about, you know, this is like, the perspective of a child in, in a simple game and mm. going, this game is actually rigged. Yep. It's actually rigged. And the references to the socioeconomic plight that they were feeling at the time is buried in every line. Yeah. And the, the cross the line, they count you out. That's when you go back down to, I think I've won. Yeah. I, I went outside Correct. the system. Because I can't win. Yeah. I can't the win. System, the, yeah. the system's rigged. Yeah. The system's rigged. I stepped outside. Yeah. They're like, oh, you're out. I'm like, no, but, but I'm you, free. But you think about <laughs> it. The rules of the game are set up so that you're not intended to win. So yeah. people trapped in poverty are not mm. intended to win if they play by the rules. Right. Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. If they play by the rules. And the, what she's subtly saying is that hmm, maybe... You know, from a child's perspective, maybe we don't have to play by the rules. Yeah. So stepping outside is not such a bad thing. And maybe, oh, maybe it goes, like, even into Thomas More's Utopia. Yeah. First you create poverty, then you create criminals. Yeah. You, you know? Hand in hand. Hand in hand. Right. Yeah. It's it's a transition, right? Yeah. Because you force people, then, to make choices that 
from non-choices, yeah, you right? create the situation that makes Where, that's criminals, the, the, and then you punish crack, them, and then you punish them, yeah. right? And, and 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 we have to look at that in our society. I think Maya, both Maya and um, Langston, have done brilliant jobs of, ta- of of just showing us what it is we're all about, mm. right? What it is we we stir up the anger. So maybe you know. 30 years before he was talking about the anger that he was feeling but saying that know my history yep. and then she's like and this is the game i'm forced to play that's right right yeah and it doesn't matter the move that you make whether it's one foot or two feet left left or right. right it doesn't she's saying you've been played out all yep. of these moves so Stepping outside of that is, is maybe the necessary thing to to claim it, right? To claim yeah. the the win. <laughs> Which in this in in, yeah. a, in a similar vein is exactly what Langston Hughes did when you step outside Correct. the the. That slave, narrative, the narrative of yeah. of enslavement, yeah, well, not the actual yeah. lived experience of it, yeah, right. But you step outside of that, yeah. you see freedom, you yeah. see something beyond, you see that, yeah, that that you can succeed. And and I th- and that's exactly the point, right? He's saying there's a difference between slave and enslavement, mm. right? Slave is who you are labeled and you become, mm. right? Enslavement is what's been done. The system that the has, system that that's has been done. So look gave at you that label. track. Yeah. So understand that what the system is is not what you are. Yeah, exactly. Right. And yeah. and they're saying it doesn't matter what the game is. If you can't win by the rules, then Maybe this is not the way you play the game. That's right. Maybe right? we need to change the we rules. We need to change the rules <laughs> or figure out how to circumvent those rules. Exactly. Um, so I, I really love this. And I think that, you know, this is a good way to teach, mm. I think, children about sort of that period in her history or even to engage in it about the discourse of today. You mm. know, when we talk about poverty and socioeconomic issues. I, if I were a teacher in a classroom, I'd be using oh, this every day of the week. Because, I mean, there's so many lines. Like, you think everybody for himself. Yeah. Well, that's the, what the system yeah. wants. You Selfishness. Think, yeah. Right? We are so much stronger together. Yeah. And exactly. they know that. Exactly. <laughs> but like you say, if the system has a construct and the system's like, you create poverty, then you create criminals, then you enslave them again, right? Yeah. yeah. You, you call punish it. It's enslavement. Yeah. Again, yeah. No, no freedom. Then... That's the system, right? Yeah. That is the way it's intended to work. And both of these poets are saying, oh, hold up. <laughs> I see what's happening here. <laughs> Let's be a little bit more transparent about what we're doing here, yeah. right? And so that's the thing. And it's it becomes more self-interest and selfishness, yeah. right? And for whom? Yeah. But it, it, and it asks the questions, too. And I think that's what Langston Hughes' second one does, just simply named Harlem. Yeah. He says, what are we going to do? We are people who have big dreams. Yeah. We come from this long history. Yeah. You know, Euphrates, Congo. Yeah. Um, Nile. No. We have come from all of that. We have all that living within us. Yeah. So what happens to a dream deferred? Yeah. And I love this poem because it's all about questions. Yeah. You know, and it goes like this. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet. Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? And he has that in italics at the yeah. end there. I love that. I was like, kind of like, I think this is where we're going. It's like, ah, hang on. This is when his Malcolm X side <laughs> really shows, right? Yeah. Um. But at the same time, it's that philosophical. But it is. Something has to happen. Yeah. So, so, so if you have a dream yeah. and you're in a system that doesn't allow yeah. you to pursue that dream, one of these things is going to happen. And the lens that you see it from. So if you see the 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 balancing of, you know, is it this or this? Mm. Is it this or this? And you have to ask yourself when you put the rules together what outcome you're trying to get, yeah. right? If you're rigging the game to create criminals out of people, understand that's what you're going to get, get. Mm. right? If you create them for harmony, right? If that's you get it for get. that's what you're going to get. So you get a choice when you do it mm. but the the start of it for me comes back to the soul right yeah what happens yeah to the person to the person yeah. if you don't allow them their universal right as a human being yeah. right yep i get stuck on that line and you, and, and you can see that he's he's referring the yeah. dream he's referring to is this american dream american dream call it yeah 
but what happens to that American dream that's been deferred yeah. because of the system? And like all of these, raisin in the sun, fester like a sore, rotten meat, none of it sounds pleasant, sugar over like a syrupy sweet, heavy load, yeah. explode. Yeah. Those are not good outcomes. No. None of them. But you sugarcoat them. So if you look yes, at that, like it, it yes. took me a while to see that. It's like what he's describing is still not good, mm. but it's how we sugarcoat exactly. those things that are not good to make people think that, hey, wrap it up in pretty paper and That's then right. it must be good. Yeah. But you know there's something festering underneath. Uh, mm. A colleague of mine once asked if I dreamt and I thought, hmm, yeah, I do dream, but I didn't understand the context of what she was saying. Yeah, I do dream. I dream about everything that's happening in my life. But what she was asking is, do you have a dream of something better? Yeah. And this is what we're talking about in this dream deferred. Yeah. If you don't give people a reason to, to aspire to something, to dream about something, to be able to manifest the things that they want in their lives, mm. to create the environment that they want to be in, what happens when you hold that back? Exactly. We have to imagine yes. a future. A and better. Then, a better future, yes. And then be able to have a pathway towards Correct. it. Or, mm. or what are we doing here? We're just playing day by day. We're just stagnate. Yeah. yeah. Just, just whatever happens. what we've already done. And, and I think that that's a cycle that is intended. Like mm. our, our construct often is about trapping in the cycle where people feel apathetic because they don't have anywhere to go. They lose the ability to dream, or mm. Langston would say, deferred, yeah. right? A dream deferred. So it dries up. It so dries there, there up. There goes the dream. It's there out goes the window. It, and there's no possibility. Or it just always bugs yeah. you that yeah. you're not allowed, like the sore that never heals, yeah. this dream I was never able to achieve. Yeah, I mean, there's so much in this. Yeah. And what I like also about these poems, and I think it goes to the heart of the African American experience yeah. within the U.S. Yeah, is if you think about it, uh, Langston Hughes, even though was dismissed, was instrumental for Maya Angelou. Yeah, and was instrumental for Lorraine Hansberry, who wrote a play called *A Raisin in the, the Sun, Sun*, which was all about a father who had this dream, yeah. and it just kept getting yeah. crushed, yeah. and he got buried under the system that kept continually yeah. kept him out. Yeah. Yeah, and so we see this, and, and from there, I mean, it goes on. I'm, I'm just giving us three right now. Yeah. But these the, these threads, these dominoes, yeah. just speak to all of the, of the um, output from that U.S. experience. Yeah. That is horrendous, yeah. horrible. Yeah. And you have these people who come out and say, let's change it. Let's yeah. make it better. Yeah. Let's dream different. Yeah not hold on to that yeah and i feel sometimes uh maybe in today's society we try to again like i said resurrect yeah that that horror of it and we can't dismiss the horror but we have to move forward extend beyond yeah we've yeah. got to move forward, to move forward. um uh, I was thinking about w one of the things that you know when we talk about the african-american experience is that what allowed enslaved people freedom was collective collaboration that's right right one guy didn't escape no. he found a route for others and we've had lots of examples through that period of time of how collectively the spirituality that came out oh, of that definitely. and when you look at the references in maya said it's everyone for himself it is teaching us the thing that doesn't work. Exactly. So not only are we get, rigging the game, we're actually encouraging to, the players to play in such a way yep. that they can never win, oh, right? Yes. So th that's the thing. And, and, and if I look at, you know, today, that's probably still an issue within the African American culture mm. is that we this individualistic thing where we have to be more collective. So, you know, I was listening to Spike Lee the other day and, you know, thank God for directors like Spike. Yeah. Who can say, No, let's go back to basics here. We have to work in consort. We have to come together on these issues mm. because it's the collective energy that's going to get us to that next place. That's right. Right. So the collective energy that's also Based in some sort yeah, of spiritual, it, it is. Yeah, but uh, but can I, beyond yourself, yeah. I guess is the, is what I'm trying to say. If I like, can't dream, I mean, what is there? Right? Yeah. 
if, 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 if I don't have the ability to see something, you know, much better or brighter to work toward, what is there? And that's what we've always yeah. wanted for our children. Yeah. We want to create a better yeah. world. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this has been so enjoyable. I really enjoy talking poetry with you, TB. It's just one of my favorite things to do. So I'm glad we're back. And um, yeah, happy yeah. to be here. Yeah, I like like I said, my soul's been starving, so yeah. it's been fed for a little while. I look forward to coming back with yes. with you know more and more. And and I I hope that anyone who's listening, you know, if you have a p- favorite poem, just let us know because yeah, love to look, uh, yeah at love to look at it. And so the function of poetry for me is maybe underrated because Mm -hmm. it functions in so many levels. Yes. You know, that all I can do is encourage you to find one. (laughs) Find a poem you love and read it every day. Sounds good to me. Okay. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining us. And we'll see you again next time. Okay. Until next time, let's give them some lip. Yep. See ya.